There you go. I'll hand it over to you. Hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing tonight? Hope everyone's feeling well. If you are here for the American Express career event, then you are in the right place. Uh, I can't tell you how excited a lot of hours and time and true leadership has gone into creating this fine event for you. So all of our HBCU candidates who have gone, who have uh, already joined and have joined on time, uh, thank you. That's, uh, that, that, that's, that's just letting us know that you are serious about handling your business. And uh, to our American Express team, thank you so much for all that you've done to make this possible. Uh, I know we've been talking about this and to see uh, the chat room blowing up, I see over almost 90 candidates are already online and ready to hear what you have to share with them today. So this is, this is what it's all about. So um, thank you, American Express. And to our HBCU Connect candidates, thank you as well. Thanks for being on time. And we, we are ready to get going. So at this time, we're just going to cover um, a little bit about our, our agenda for the night. So you'll know what's going to transpire over the next hour and 27 minutes or so. Uh, we are starting with welcoming our American Express team. We're so thankful for all they've done and all the work they've put in to make this event fantastic and nothing short of fantastic. So thank you. Um, we will then have a keynote address uh, from a, a, a person that I, I've grown to know and respect. We actually went to grad school together, uh, Mr. Anthony Siri, who's an executive vice president with American Express. So I know Anthony personally, and I'm just tickled pink that we get a chance to work together some 20 years later. So uh, that's going to take place. Then after that, we'll have our global consumer an inside view of American Express, right? Or affectionately known as Amex, either one. Uh, tonight we will, we will interchange American Express and Amex, but both understanding that we're talking about the same mega brand that we all know and love, okay? So uh, you may hear those terms interchange, but we want you to know that, uh, that, 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 that that's okay. American Express and Amex were one big happy family. And who knows, uh, with the right, right moves, right coordination, you may end up with a nice uh, opportunity to work with the Amex family, and I'm sure they'd, be, they'd love to have a new uh, team of leaders, and that's what they're, they're looking for tonight. Then we're going to go into what's called our breakout sessions. So you, we'll have three distinct breakout rooms, and you'll go into one of those rooms, uh, whether that's marketing, strategy, and analytics, or digital products. And then we'll circle back, we'll wrap up, we'll have a quick wrap up, and then we'll discuss next steps. So uh, with that, we're going to get going. Uh, we're going to start a, a quick American Express video. The team has uh, provided us, and, and let's, get it, let's get it going. Can we get that queued up? Thank you, American Express. That was hot. I loved it. I loved it. That, that's the way to get the energy cracking, get the energy rolling. And uh, for those of you joining late, use that chat box. Use that chat feature. That's the way you're going to communicate with us tonight. Make sure you're dropping your LinkedIn profile as well as your school. Let us know where you're representing. And we want to make sure that all of you have a time to shine. We've talked about American Express and all they've done to bring this partnership together, but we wouldn't be here as far as HBCU Connect if we didn't have the founder and CEO with us Mr. Will Moss. Will, the floor is yours, sir. Hey, thanks, Larry. So uh, welcome, everyone. Super excited to have uh, all of you join us for this awesome event with American Express. Uh, like Larry said, my name is Will Moss. I'm the CEO and founder of HBCU Connect. So for some of you guys, this is going to be the first time that you've had a chance to engage with us. Maybe someone on uh, my team may have reached out to you and you were not already a part of HBCU Connect. So I'd like to give a quick uh, intro to who we are so that you are in so that you know that you're in the right place to take advantage of opportunities like this. So we've been around since 1999, the largest website uh, dedicated to HBCU students and graduates and opportunities for you. 
uh, students and graduates of HBCUs or African Americans or Latinx uh, professionals. Uh, this is our first event with American Express. So we are super excited uh, not only to partner with American Express uh, and for all of the opportunities that they have, but we're super excited for you because of the opportunity this presents for you. So, so for those of you guys that have maybe attended some of our events, you, you may already know that these events are serious opportunities where you can potentially land a new career. Now, for some of you guys that have never attended our events, we have hosted uh, diversity recruitment events uh, for, for eight or nine years now, all over the country uh, in physical locations where we might pick a location like Dallas, Texas or Atlanta, Georgia or the DC, Maryland, Virginia area. We would invite an employer in to sponsor the event and we would invite candidates in um, that have the background to, to be a fit for um, those roles and, um, roles and opportunities at those companies. And we were doing that, like I said, in physical locations. Fast forward to 2020, COVID-19 hit. And um, unfortunately, we had to stop doing the events physically, but kudos to a lot of our partners like American Express, who have also wanted to continue to do events and do these events virtually, even though, like I said, we can't do them physically. So this is a great opportunity um, to connect, to learn more about American Express, and then follow up on the opportunity to potentially interview and be hired. So I'm super excited for you all uh, for this special opportunity because if you're a part of this event and you submitted your resume and sent your resume to us, we're gonna share your resumes with the American Express team, but then also you're gonna have the opportunity to sort of raise your hand and submit a form directly with American Express if you're interested in interviewing, and then they will be picking some of you all um, for roles that are fit for your, for your, for your skill set. So that is the opportunity for you. We're super excited, like I said. We hope to hear some good news about some of you going through the interview process and being hired. And uh, again, kudos to you guys for, for, for joining us. If you guys didn't join us, we could not make these events happen. And then again, also kudos to American Express. We thank you all for this opportunity on behalf of our candidates. So with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Larry, uh, and you can introduce our keynote speaker. Thanks. Perfect, thank you, Will. That was very well said. Thank you so much for uh, allowing us to do this today. This is awesome. A phenomenal event. And uh, right now, I want to take the time to introduce someone who I've known for quite some time, probably about 22 years now. And you just never know where life's going to take you and when you're going to cross paths again. The gentleman I'm referring to is now the Executive Vice President of Global Lending and Co-Brand with American Express. Uh, his name is Anthony Siri. Anthony and I started our careers uh, together some 20 years ago at Lucent Technologies. We went through a very rigorous financial leadership development program uh, which, which included uh, some rotational assignments. Uh, I remember spending time in, over in Europe with Anthony and, and doing some, some field work with Anthony in New Jersey. And uh, 20 years later, here we are, our paths are crossing again. And I want to make sure that you understand the value that this man brings. Um, Mr. Anthony Siri is, is quite a guy and uh, we're, we're honored to have him here with us tonight. So uh, Anthony, I will turn the floor over to you and you tell us a little bit more about yourself and American Express and anything that you think will help our HBCU Connect candidates uh, to, to further themselves, to become a better leader uh, and possibly a, 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 the newest employee at American Express. All right, I think I'm unmuted. So thanks, Larry, I appreciate it. Um, I'm super excited to be here this evening. Um, I wasn't going to be here because unfortunately I was traveling, um, but I was able to kind of make some changes to my train schedule and sprint down uh, to a train and get here on time uh, to be able to be with, here, uh, with you guys tonight. So um, I'm super excited to be here and I really appreciate it. And thanks for the intro and the kind words, Larry. Um, definitely have a reciprocal uh, uh, feeling for you as well. Um, I think Larry introduced me. I, I've been at Amex uh, for six months uh, after a three and a half year hiatus, but I was at Amex for 15 years prior. Um, so live and bleed uh, Amex Blue. Uh, I've been here for a long period of time. Um, and I love seeing the chat. I'm gonna try not to be distracted because everything sometimes pops up, these bright, shiny objects. I keep reading them. I saw Lincoln University, which isn't too far from where I live down in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. I'm looking to see if I see Delaware State University because that's not too far from me as well. Um, I saw someone just ping, they were a Lucent uh, Technologies graduate as well. Um, so it's great to see uh, everyone kind of pinging through the chats and, and sharing some of the information. So I'll get right into a little bit around, um, around Amex on the next couple of slides. 
So just to give you guys a little bit of uh, an overview of American Express, really three major business units, uh, commercial services. Think of that as you know, American Express corporate cards. Uh, for those who are in the workforce right now, you may use them for business travel. Um, you heard of the brand Open from American Express. So that's our small business products from a card perspective. But we also diversified uh, the products and services that we actually bring to our small businesses across multiple payment facilities and payment products. So that's the commercial side of the house. Uh, on the merchant services side, um, you have the Amex network. Think about that as Visa and MasterCard. As you swipe your credit card, um, the rails in which those transactions run over, that's the Amex network. So very much similar to what you see or you, what you hear about with Visa and MasterCard. Um, think about Apple Pay and facilitating those transactions. So if you check out at a grocery store and you hold up your phone and you have your Amex card loaded into your device, um, that's actually running through the Amex network as well. We're facilitating that. Uh, I'm trying to see the whole deck because I see Rich's face on the on the uh, slides. Let me pull it up on my screen as well so I can see the whole thing because what's below it. Um, and then merchants. Um, so obviously we need accepting merchants for our products. Um, so we have a huge uh, workforce that is actually out there managing those relationships with key strategic merchants to drive acceptance. Um, so when you walk into a store and you want to pull out that Amex card, uh, we are willing, um, accepting merchants on the receiving end of that. And then there's a consumer services part of the business. That's where I work uh, within consumer services. Uh, think about it as the consumer products that uh, most of you and hopefully all of you on the phone have one of, the, of our cards. Um, it could be a co-branded card with Delta. That's where I actually just was and coming from. I was meeting with our partners at Delta down in Atlanta. It could be a proprietary credit card like our Platinum card or the Black card or the Centurion card. Um, so these are all sitting within the consumer services business. Uh, as well as on a global basis. So we operate across uh, multiple countries. I'll get into that in the next couple of slides, but we're a multinational uh, organization. Uh, I've been to, I think, 15 different countries just working with American Express. Um, so it's been uh, a great part of my career. And it's afforded me the opportunity to really travel the world, given we're a global business and a global brand. So a little bit about global consumer services. Again, that this is the business unit that I work in. Uh, 3,000 plus colleagues, again, across the globe. The majority of our colleagues are sitting in, in four markets, India, Mexico, Canada, and the US. But we operate in markets all across Asia, in Australia, in, in Europe, in South America, and Latin America. So we have a broad scale business that cuts across multiple markets. We do about $35 billion in spend in, in our businesses across our products. So think about just the size and scale and magnitude of the business in terms of $35 billion worth of spend um, happening across our cards. We have 27 million card members um, that sit across global consumer services across the world. Um, so we service 27 million customers and we're very proud of our customers. We're a very customer centric organization. Um, and we're very much focused on our customers. You can hear our new branding in terms of we've got your back or the powerful backing of American Express because we're so cu customer centric. Everything we do, all the innovation that we do, you know, starts and ends with the customer. So here's just a view of some of the products within uh, consumer card services. Um, some of these are probably familiar to you. Um, you've probably seen them. You probably hold some of these products. If you don't, I encourage you to go out and apply for one of our products. Um, you can see things like the Centurion card on the top left, our newly redesigned Platinum card, which we just relaunched more recently with about $1,400 worth of value. If you go and apply for that card today and you take out that card, that card will provide you over $1,400 worth of value uh, within that product. And you can see both proprietary cards. When I say proprietary, it's cards that are issued by American Express like Platinum, um, like Gold, like Centurion, like our cashback products. But we also have partnerships with some of the most iconic brands and companies across both travel and entertainment. So you see the Marriott Bonvoy card, the Hilton Honors card, the Delta Sky Miles card. On the, on the corporate commercial side, we have relationships with Amazon and Lowe's. So you can see the reach we have with other iconic organizations and brands. And then we have other financial services. So I think historically folks would probably think of American Express as a credit card company. But over the years, we've diversified our business model to meet some of the changing dynamics within the industry, within the market, and to meet you know, unmet customer needs. So we offer personal loans today as one of our products. So if you're out there in the market thinking about renovating a bathroom or a kitchen, you're in the market for a loan, you can turn to American Express uh, as a customer to get access to a personal loan. We have lending capabilities. We've innovated on our credit cards. They're not 
I sometimes joke, it's not your grandmother or grandfather's credit card anymore. If you take out one of our products, uh, we have features built into our credit cards that look and feel like buy now, pay later services that you may see through some of our competitors like Affirm and others. So you're able to take transactions on your card and break them up into equal installments. Um, we have partnerships with um, mortgage organizations where you get special rates or discounts um, by being an American Express card member uh, through some mortgage providers. And we continue to innovate in this space. We're always innovating. We're always trying to meet customer demand, customer needs, unmet customer needs. We're watching what's happening in the industry. And we're a very innovative company. Um, we lead from the front from a technology perspective or from an innovation perspective. Despite us being you know, a 100-year-old plus company uh, that is rooted in financial service and credit cards, there's a ton of innovation happening in the organization. And it's probably one of the most exciting parts of, of working at American Express is being part of some of this innovation. I mentioned earlier as well, in terms of some of the, the uh, business units that operate within American Express, even within global consumer services, as I mentioned earlier, there's five or six different, say, sub-organizations. You'll get to meet some of those folks in some of the breakout sessions today. Um, so we have an international business, like I mentioned earlier. Um, we have relationships with iconic brands as well on a global basis, like British Airways and Air Canada. Uh, we issue products across multiple markets, 17, 18, 19 markets where we're issuing proprietary credit cards on a global basis. I mentioned US consumer services and premium services. That's where we actually issue our Centurion cards and Platinum cards and the premium services that we offer to our car members. But we also have dining um, assets. Um, for those who love to go out to eat, you could download our Resi app. Resi is a company that's owned by American Express that will get you access to reservations at some of the top restaurants um, in the neighborhoods where you, you live, work, and interact. Uh, Global Lending and Co-Brand is the organization that I lead. So think about uh, all the lending products that I just mentioned, our cashback products, our co-brand products with the likes of Delta and Marriott Hilton all sit within my organization. We've started to move into banking services. Like I mentioned, this is new in ter terms of how the company evolves and is evolving over time, where we partner with third parties in terms of offering mortgage offerings, in terms of personal loans, in terms of financial services and other financial services products beyond just credit cards. Uh, we have a digital labs organization, uh, which is where a lot of the innovation in the company is happening. These, these folks are at the cutting edge of what's happening in the industry, trying to continuously stay ahead of the curve and innovate on the back of our existing products, on the back of entering new spaces or new businesses, uh, on partnering with some of the large fintech organizations or, or large tech organizations and tech companies to really make sure we continue to innovate and digitize our business as our customers evolve and as they become more digitally savvy and so on and so forth. And then we have a big corporate development and strategic partnership organization, which manages our large strategic relationships at the company level. So think about Facebook and Google and Amazon and some of these large players. We have folks who are dedicated to working with those organizations to help build both of our businesses collectively. Uh, and we also do a lot of deals, this deal work. Um, we don't do everything organically within our organization. So we'll go out and look at opportunities for partnerships or joint ventures or acquisitions. And we have a whole organization that's dedicated and focused to that within uh, global consumer services. And, and lastly, you know, we celebrate diversity. We have 16 uh, colleague engagement networks. I won't go through them all. You'll be able to see them on the slides. Um, but you know, the organization takes uh, diversity and inclusion very seriously. It's, it's in our DNA. It's a part of our conversations on a consistent basis. And there's a lot of opportunities within the organization um, through colleague engagement networks uh, we could join uh, and participate. And we've seen those grow over time and expand over time. And I've been part of these in my past stint at Amex. I plan to be part of some of these organizations in my new stint at Amex. And they're just sup a super valuable resource for all employees um, that you know folks in the team just love to take advantage of. So I think those are the the general slides. Today, we'll, we'll have some opportunity areas um, that are highlighted here in terms of where you guys can kind of go into those breakout rooms, have some conversations. To Larry's point earlier, leverage the chat box, um, throw on your LinkedIn profiles. Um, I think you'll really enjoy getting to know uh, some of my colleagues uh, and learn about some of the opportunities that sit within the organizations within American Express. Um, and like I said, I, I spent 15 years at Amex. I left Amex, I rejoined. Um, it's really an incredible place to work. 
Anthony, thank you so much, man. That was high level and dynamic, but it did give us a view of, of what's going on at Amex uh, for, for those of us who don't know. And the chat box was, was lighting up as you were speaking. Uh, a number of our, our HBCU Connect members do own Amex cards or have used your services. So that's always good to see. Uh, I saw different brands, different names. Uh, you know, the platinum card is awesome. Hey, I'm in it for the miles. So it, it, it just goes to show that the Amex brand is ringing true and that our marketplace is supporting your business. So uh, thank you. Uh, I did have a, I guess, a follow-up question for you. Yeah, uh, sure. If you didn't mind, you, you said that you were working with Amex for about 15 years, and then you left and came back. What, why? What, what happened to, to make you leave, and uh, why did you come back, and what's making you stay now? Yeah, leaving was more just an, an interesting opportunity that presented itself to me. So it was probably, I say, probably one of the top hardest decisions I made in my life was to leave American Express. Um, and I left for three and a half years, um, obviously kept relationships, uh, kept my network strong within Amex, always had a fond appreciation of Amex and a lot of strong memories in American Express. I mean, I met my wife at American Express, right? And my brother worked at American Express. So I have a lot of fond memories from, from a company perspective, even through my personal life. Um, I think what made me come back outside of the job I'm in, which is super exciting. And, you know, I was given an opportunity to lead an incredible organization, an incredible part of the business within American Express. But if you take away the, the job element of it, I, I think what really drew me back was uh, the people and, and the culture of American Express. Um, you know, watching the way Amex handled COVID outside looking in uh, from an empathy perspective, from a colleague first perspective, um, was really incredible to me. It really, uh, it wasn't surprising, to be quite honest, because I, I knew this organization well when I left, but it's so employee focused. It's so employee fo uh, first. The, the, the culture is real. It's a place where I believe I could, I could bring my whole self to work. Um, I remember getting some advice from my dad when I graduated college, and he asked me just some random question in a conversation. He asked me, did I study acting? in college. And I'm like, no, dad, you know, I didn't study acting in college. I, I was an economics and, and finance major. Um, I got to understand the question. He's like, he's like, find a place after college where you could go and work, where you could be yourself, where you don't have to be an actor. We don't have to show up every day and be someone different. So find a place where you could bring yourself to work and be, a, you know, your full self to work on a daily basis. And I, I, that advice still sticks with me today. I use this story a lot and tell people the story, but Amex is a place where I feel like I could bring my whole self to work. What you see is what you get. What my colleagues see is what exactly my kids see, my daughters see, my wife sees, my brothers see, my college friends see, um, and go down the line. I feel like I'm exactly myself at Amex, and I feel very comfortable being my whole self at American Express, and that's welcome. So there's a unique element to Amex's culture uh, where I think it's just, it's, it's hard to pinpoint exactly what it is, but when you work here, you, you feel it, you see it. And you actually are able to tell others about it when you actually leave to say, you know what, Amex is an incredible place to work. So I, to me, it comes back to the, the culture. Wow, man, that, that was a phenomenal response. And uh, I had a follow up for you, uh, just looking at the Amex video earlier where it said you're allowed to speak your truth and come on board so you can make the magic happen. And you kind of spoke to that uh, indirectly. I had a follow up question. I'll ask it yeah. anyway, just for the, for the purpose of the group. Uh, but the follow up is, that last slide you showed, you showed a number of different um, diversity groups. I mean, there was probably 15, 20 different diversity groups. I saw Native American Network and Black American Network. And for the purposes of our diversity panel here and our HBCU Connect group, why is that so important? I mean, you had a whole slide with numerous amounts of resources there. Why is that important to, to you and, and Amex? Yeah, I, I, think, I think people wanna have a sense of belonging where they work, right? So I think having employee networks is a great way for people to engage um, from a belonging perspective. But what it also does, it helps educate as well. So for example, um, there's nothing precluding me from joining any one of these networks. Uh, and I've been part of networks that I, I don't necessarily on the surface, people see me as affiliated with. And I do that to network. I, I do that to educate myself. I do that to engage with folks. I do that to learn. And so on and so forth. So I, I think Amex builds a culture around um, a belonging and an education. So as you see this series of 16 or 17 colleague engagement networks that exist, you know, I'm part of these, I sit on panels on these organizations, 
I look to newsletters from these organizations. I try to engage myself in different conversations and events that I think are interesting to me. Um, and so it's a very inclusive culture. I, I know that's a, a word you'll hear a lot about in terms of inclusivity, but you know, it's a big part of the diversity and inclusion equation, right? Sometimes the inclusiv inclusivity part of that equation sometimes gets missed in terms of not being actionable. So I, I believe Amex is a super inclusive culture and you can see that through some of these colleague engagement networks. And like I said, I'm sure you'll be able to, in the breakout groups, talk to folks as well about their experience in some of these networks. Um, and you've heard a little bit about my experience in these networks as well. Um, but it's all about inclusivity. And I think that's kind of at the core of the, of the culture of American Express. Well, Anthony, I, uh, man, I, I can't tell you enough. Thank you for, uh, for joining our call today. This has been, uh, been amazing. The responses and the advice and everything that you shared. I've seen the chat. Uh, people are, are really listening to what you had to say. So thank you for, for giving us that input and that share. Um, we're going to talk to some more of your Amex team uh, simply because we need to make sure that we're staying on, uh, on track. Yep. So yep. Uh, thank you so much again, yep. sir. You know, we may follow up uh, depending on what the chat box says. We may come back to you with a question later on if you can yeah, hang out. I'm with sticking. Us I'm sticking around, so I'll be here. I just got to figure out how to mute myself, or maybe Thanks you so guys much. will mute me. Thank you so much. <laughs> so at this point in time, we're going to move into our uh, global consumer inside view. Uh, we've heard from our keynote speaker, Mr. Anthony Siri, and now we're going to move into Mr. DJ Lombard, who is a senior analyst uh, in the global retail and e-commerce partnerships area. So, uh, Mr. Lombard, are you there with us? Yeah, thanks, Larry. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is DJ Lombard. I am from uh, Dallas, Texas, and I'm a HBCU alum. And I had the opportunity to go to Oakwood University, and I saw uh, someone in the chat who went to Oakwood as well. Um, it's in Huntsville, Alabama. And after college, I uh, started in the mortgage industry. And after working there for a couple of years, I uh, kind of wanted something uh, different and change. And I uh, was always a big fan of American Express. Um, and so I, uh, being a finance major, looked into like the uh, card economics world, which is uh, Anthony's world, and I uh, had the opportunity to join America Express in May of 2019. And was in that role for about uh, two and a half years or so. And then went uh, a little bit of a uh, change in career direction and had the opportunity to join, uh, go into marketing and partnerships. So now I currently work on the uh, Amazon relationship with uh, Payload Points and just started about uh, three months ago. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining our call today. It's, it's definitely a pleasure to meet you. Uh, heard a lot about you, but but to, to make uh, make your acquaintance is great. And uh, to be here, uh, giving our candidates here some 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 updates and some some information is, is phenomenal. Uh, let me ask you a quick question, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. What uh, you said that you moved into more of a marketing type role and you made the transition. What would you consider to be your biggest challenge day to day uh, at this point? Yeah, probably say, uh, so I'm a finance major and really just learning the uh, marketing jargon and the different systems and having that, um, they call it a, a marketer's mindset. And so uh, my leaders have been really great in helping me and develop uh, that mindset and always think, thinking of customer first. Um, and so it's been the biggest challenge, but it's been uh, a really good growth area for me. And I've uh, learned a lot in the past uh, three months. Awesome. And, and you said you're working with Amazon. What seems to be, what would you say your, your biggest uh, challenge or success, one or the other? Which one would you go with in working with, with Amazon? Yeah, so we just, uh, biggest success would be we just re-sign um, a contract uh, with Amazon, um, and that usually takes takes a while. And probably the biggest challenge is um, you have uh, two organizations that have um, similar goals, but sometimes different ways of getting there. And so, um, just working with um, another uh, giant partner like Amazon, um, and try to come together to find common ground so um, both uh, teams and companies can win. Awesome, amazing. Well, thanks again for joining us tonight. And thank you for sharing. Um, at this point, we're going to move to one of your counterparts, Ms. Christina Zhao, who is the Associate Product Manager of Digital Labs. Uh, Christina, are, are you there with us? Yep, I'm present and ready. Um, hey, y'all. My name is Christina. I am from Raleigh, North Carolina. 
and I'm an associate product manager on the peer-to-peer payments team. So peer-to-peer payments, you can think Venmo, PayPal, Cash App, um, all forms of digital payments that involve friends and family. Um, So I actually joined Amex right in the middle of the pandemic, uh, June 2020. I am a new grad and I've been enrolled for about a year and a half now. Um, Just really have loved every single moment I've been here. Well, thank you, Christina. So you've been there, you you started with Amazon, with, I'm sorry, you started with Amex, Amex when? I started in June, 2020. So I started remotely. Um, I was living still in North Carolina at the time, um, met everybody virtually and didn't get to meet my entire team until about a year after my first day. Um, so that was pretty exciting. Everyone was a lot taller than I expected them to be. Um, but, you know, as Anthony had mentioned, I think that culture aspect really even trans transcend screens. Um, It's kind of like jumping on a phone with an old friend when I got to meet everyone for the first time. It was like we had all been working really closely together and we all got to like pick up like no time had passed um, and it's just been really great so far. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And what what would you say? I mean, you you said peer-to-peer. What what, what are the new challenges? I mean, we all are familiar with using peer-to-peer payments. What are the the challenges? Where are we going? What's next? Yeah, for sure. I think peer-to-peer payments is really an evolving industry. I think, you know, uh, society is moving to become a cashless place. Um, We have to evolve to understand, you know, the different technological limitations and, you know, strategic partnerships that are evolving within peer-to-peer payments, whether that's Amex developing, you know, its own solution, whether it's partnering with the larger players in the field, um, just kind of navigating the ever-changing landscape. It's still a pretty new industry. Um, And that's what's so exciting about like being a new grad in an emerging field. I kind of get to like go through all the growing pains, learning all the new regulations as the field is emerging. And and is that more or less, you feel like you're kind of thrown to the fire there or or is it training or do you have mentors? How does that work? Yeah, I I actually have really great leadership and mentorship within this area. Um, I personally graduated with a degree in data science and computer science. So I don't actually have any financial services background. Um, However, my direct manager and his manager, so essentially everybody else on my team has a lot of experience within financial services, accounting and economics. um, And they've been more than happy to kind of walk me through kind of, you know, modeling and analysis from the ground up, kind of some of those areas when it comes to like finances um, that I might be lacking on a little bit um, compared to my peers. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Christina. We, 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 we love having you tonight and thank you for your input and continued success to you. Uh, please hold on. We may have uh, a question in the chat if we have time that may come to you. Uh, so be prepared for that. Uh, for our HBCU candidates, if you have a question for the panelists, please drop that in the chat. And if we have the time, we will squeeze it in and see if we can't get you a candid response. Uh, so do utilize the chat. Um, we're, at this point, we want to uh, go down to one more to another one of our uh, Amex uh, executives or big timers, uh, Ms. Ajua Bwatuin. Uh, she is an awesome talent. I, I did get a chance to meet her earlier in the week virtually. Um, Ajua, are you here with us? I am. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. How are you? Happy to be here. Wonderful. T- tell us who you are and how you got to Amex. Yes, my name is Ajwa Boateng. Um, I'm from New York, and I've been with Amex now for six years. Um, I was recruited from grad school, um, and I started in our co-brand business, and that's in Anthony's world. Um, I started managing our relationships with financial services partners, and from there went on to our global network services business. If you remember, that was also on one of the slides Anthony presented on. From there, I went back to co-brand <laughs> to work on our Hilton business. And then now I'm now in our consumer banking business. Um, and as a consumer in this consumer banking business, I'm a director of product management, um, working on innovating products on, and partnerships um, that can serve our customers beyond just the credit card. 
Um, I don't know if anyone knows this, but we do have banking products. Uh, we have a high yield savings account. If you guys are interested in uh, growing your dollars beyond the, the standard rate, look at the Amex uh, personal savings account. Um, but our team is looking at different ways that we can continue to innovate on banking products uh, to be able to better serve our customers' financial needs. Well, thank you, Ajwa. So if I wanted to uh, get one of those personal savings high yield uh, accounts, how would I go about doing that? You can Google it. A beautiful web page will come up and you can just sign up. Um, and, you know, I don't know if everyone has a high savings account or knows about it, but it allows you to earn a more competitive rate um, than just their standard uh, interest rate that you would have in a you know, standard savings account um, and hopefully, you know, uh, be able to grow your money a little bit faster. Well, thank you. We had a question in the chat and they wanted, they wanted to know, do you all hire financial analysts um, in that segment? Um, so within that segment, uh, we don't have people that are any, like actively managing those accounts in terms of, I think, a traditional bank, in a traditional bank way. Um, but within the consumer banking organization, what we're actually looking for are people who are innovators, right? This is a new organization for us. Um, people who are not afraid to get their hands dirty, uh, being able to work in a space where um, you can be a thought leader, a strategic thinker, um, uh, think about the ways that you can we, we can better serve our customers, um, leveraging partnerships or even American Express proprietary capabilities um, to serve uh, various bank products to our customers. So you don't have to necessarily be a financial analyst to be in this business. Understood. Perfect. And I think there's a question in the chat and they were asking your high yield savings account. Does that correlate to the stock market? Is it relative no, no, this, this, this wouldn't be, this would not be an investment product, but it's also something that we're looking into as well. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm being vague on purpose because there are a lot of new um, capabilities and products that we're looking into, um, but the high yield savings account is separate from any kind of investment device. Understood. Well, thank you so much. And we, we, we don't want you to give all the, the golden nuggets out because we know there is a, uh, a breakout session coming. So there will be more um, more information coming from that, but we appreciate you sharing with us. And if you two would hang out, there may be more questions uh, coming your way. All right. All right. I'm just kind of perusing the chat, just seeing where we are. Um, looks like we have about 110 candidates are here waiting to hear what Amex has for them. And, and hopefully we can pull this thing together we can bring some top tier talent to to the uh the world of amex because you guys have really impressed me so far so i know the uh i know our candidates are are flying high right now uh we're going to move on over to another panelist uh mr jorge miranda who's the director of global co-brand business development uh jorge are you with us hi yeah i'm here um hey how are so, you quick intro on myself so can you hear me yeah yes so my name is Jorge Miranda. I'm a director, as you said, in our uh, global consumer co-brand business development team. Uh, but quick background about myself. I grew up in Spain for the most part, uh, but also lived in Mexico and Switzerland for a few years when I was younger. I went to college in the UK and started my working career 10 years ago at uh, American Express in Spain. Uh, throughout my time at Amex, I've held various roles uh, in finance, supporting our consumer card issuing business across various geographies, uh, so including Spain, where I originally joined, London, uh, where I spent three years, and for the four, past four years um, in our New York City uh, offices. Uh, so just to share a brief overview of what our, um, well, my team and I focus on, um, we partner closely with our international markets um, in order to ensure that we retain and grow our consumer co-brand uh, partnerships. Uh, just to give you a flavor of what that looks like, uh, last year our team helped extend our British Airways uh, co-brand partnership in the UK, uh, which represents one of our most important co-brand partnerships um, outside of the US. And more recently as well, our, or this year, our, our team also helped develop a strategic response to the changes uh, brought by COVID-19 uh, that affected how our co-brand card members across the world uh, use our products and benefits. Well, thank you, Jorge. We, we have a question for you. In the grand scheme of sure. things, when we, when we look at American Express 
and the business in the business world and in the corporate world and as a, as a powerhouse brand, how big is the international piece uh, in compared to domestic? Yeah, uh, co compared to uh, well, definitely the U.S. is our is our is our largest uh, business. Um, that's that's for sure. But you know, our our international business is is, is growing uh, at a rapid pace. Particularly, if you think about uh, you know uh, pre-COVID. So we've had some challenges recently, as have you know many other competitors um, because of COVID. Um, but you know, I would say it's it's a it's 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 a large. Uh, component of our business that is that is growing um, and, and gaining more traction for sure. And, and what do you think is, is the biggest opportunity segment internationally? Is it credit cards? Is it another form of marketing? Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, there's a lot of focus uh, into lending, expanding our, our, our lending presence in international, uh, which in some cases is not as developed as it is in the U.S. Um, but also, you know, from a, from a coverage even perspective, right? If you think about uh, that, if anybody of you guys have had uh, the experience of uh, having an American Express card, right? Um, in, 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 in some, some geographies, right? It's, it's not the same experience as in the US. So, so there's definitely growth opportunities uh, from, from that perspective. Um, and, and then in terms of brand relevance as well, um, you know, we can, we, we're definitely uh, growing our presence internationally. Thank you. And, and how, how is it, if I come to American Express, I have two to three years working experience. I come to American Express and I work in one group for a couple of years. Am I free to try to move into another area and expand my career? Or am I kind of siloed in one area and that's kind of my, my track path? No, so it's it's uh, definitely possible. So just looking at uh, you know my own track record, right? Um, I've, I've I've moved uh, across three different countries, uh, worked on different business units as well, had held uh, different functions. So what I would say is that you know not only is it facilitated and supported by the company, uh, but it's strongly encouraged, right? Uh, given that we really see it as a foundation to build a strong and diverse team uh, from an individual's background uh, and skill set perspective. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Jorge, for being with us tonight. I think you're providing a lot of value uh, for us who are not in the American Express world, but are hoping to get there or looking to uh, achieve a career with American Express. We, uh, we thank you for, for your input and also uh, stay close while you may have some questions coming your way. All right, so DJ, really quick, I wanted to go back to you. You said that you were a graduate of Oakwood College, which I think uh, Brian McKnight went there, the singer, R&B singer Brian McKnight was a, uh, a, a graduate or at least attendee at Oakwood. So uh, what would you say or, or would you say that your HBCU experience prepared you for your role at, at American Express? Yeah, um, going to, and uh, Brian McKnight, Brian Knight did uh, attend Oakland University. Um, and so going to HBCU, um, it definitely helped me uh, foster relationships uh, with various different people uh, within the community and uh, within Oakland University and bringing that into the corporate world, um, just going into, coming across uh, a bunch of different people, um, different backgrounds and using that same, um, how I developed relationships in college uh, at going to Oakland University has helped in the corporate world, um, especially at Amex, because Amex is a very uh, relation, relational company. And so uh, making sure you have a strong personal brand and how you carry yourself, there's different things that um, pressures that I have personal, personal relationship with at Oakwood um, to emphasize those things in class. What what challenges do you think you faced at Oakwood that if you could go back now would no longer be a challenge because of what you've learned at American Express or your time at American Express? I'm sorry, can you say that question one more time? Yeah, so now that you have this experience and you've gone on to, to be uh, a star at American Express, what challenges in college could you easily tackle now? And I'm asking this for our recent graduates who you know may have maybe dig, de dealing with some tough things or struggling. Um, what, what would you say now that you have the uh, American Express experience behind you? 
Yeah, so at MX, uh, one of the big things is being able to um, present um, and be able to influence um, stakeholders. And so with leadership, um, my leadership, uh, they've really been uh, helped me develop um, that skill. That's one thing that um, I would take back and uh, probably one thing I struggled with a little bit in college. And so, which is a major uh, part in um, just business. And so, uh, American Express has really helped me develop that skill and be able to um, influence stakeholders uh, whenever you're trying to um, say you want to bring certain things in market or say you want to prioritize uh, this over something else. And so, yeah, that's uh, definitely been a really big skill for me. Again, thank you so much. We appreciate your responses. Hey, Anthony, are you with us? We've got a question for you. You may be on mute there. Oh, I can take myself off now. Right, Eric. I'm good. Yeah, definitely. So, during, your, during your keynote, man, you, you mentioned uh, a little bit about the type of employees that you all are looking for, uh, creative, dynamic. But uh, outside of, say, a job requisite or, or a job spec, what type of what type of individual um, candidate, and this is for the benefit of, of our HBCU candidates who are online yeah. today. What type of what type of folks are you looking for um, to come over and be rising stars over at Amex? Like what what, are, what what would make me a star? What type of traits? Oh, you got them all, Larry, to be a star, so you know that. But I won't get into that here. But uh, I'd say, um, you know, I'd say attitude one, right? Just having a overall positive attitude. Um, having a high degree of intellectual curiosity, right? Just wanting to learn, I think, as I think about my own personal career, uh, a lot of opportunity has opened up as a result of just wanting to learn, right? So I'd say attitude first, high level intellectual curiosity, everything's learnable, right? So as I look for talent in my organization, I don't, I don't try to overthink things. I don't necessarily look for the, the, you know, the perfect candidate. It was interesting, I was just reading an article about lessons learned from Ted Lasso. I don't know if anyone on the phone has watched Ted Lasso. If you haven't, I would recommend watching Ted Lasso. It's fantastic. And there's been a ton of articles written uh, in Fortune and uh, Entrepreneur Magazine and others around leadership lessons learned from Ted Lasso. And I just sent a note to my team a couple of weeks ago about this, but you know everything's learnable. So I look, I look for the right attitude and approach. I look for culture carriers. I look for folks who are, are willing to have a voice and have confidence and courage. Right? So I don't necessarily look for a checkbox of specific work skills that will be perfect for the job because I didn't have all those in jobs that were given to me. Right, So I want someone to, I want to pay that back as well in terms of folks who took a chance on me and gave me an opportunity to take a new job or move into a different part of the organization or stretch me out of my comfort zone. So I look for things like attitude, intellectual curiosity, culture carriers, courage, folks who are willing to have a voice, people are going to question the status quo. Um, so those are the types of qualities I look for. Uh, I try to build around within my team. And, 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 and Amex has some real live opportunities for folks who, who possess those traits? Uh, 100%. When I do on my own organization right now. So I have uh, a lot of open opportunities in my job and I'm looking for exactly that. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily tell people um, to be discouraged by what you see on a job description, especially depending on jobs you're looking at. You know, obviously the earlier on in your career, uh, the easier it is to necessarily look at opportunities where you just have foundational skill sets that can be transferable. So get into these chat rooms, ask questions, learn a little bit more about some of the opportunities. Certain people just see things on the surface or look at job description. I've done that in my career as well. I've read a job description that says, that's not a good fit for me. Um, or I really don't understand the job description or that they're, they're saying something in there that turned me off from the job. And then actually I get into an organization, I learn about these jobs. I'm like, oh, it's a lot different than it was perceived or I, I misinterpreted how I read this and so on and so forth. So don't, I would encourage you to get into the chat rooms later, uh, ask questions, ask questions within the chat um, on the screens as well. Um, but I think there's a lot of opportunity in different parts of the organization where those foundational skill sets, attitudes and approaches to kind of their, to, to your work are super valuable. Thank you so much. I, I, I love that response. And I think it, it helps our candidates to really know. I really like the part where you said, don't get caught up in having every checkbox click there for, for the job description and uh, be ready to go out and uh, tackle new challenges anyway. I love it. 
All right, so uh, let me look over in the chat and see what we have a few more minutes here before we, just a few, but before we jump into our, our breakout session. So I'm just gonna look down through the chat box just to make sure that we're not missing anything. Um, I see some good dialogue between the two. Uh, looks like there's a question for DJ. Would you say the global retail and e-commerce partnership space is more geared towards marketing. I'm more of a technical person. Let's see, uh, more project management experience for tech projects. Uh, DJ, would you say it's more marketing related? Uh, what what your what your role is, or tech, or both, or blend? What what, what would you say? Yeah. So my current role, um, managing the relationships with uh, our pivot points partners, is more so towards marketing. Um, but uh, like I said in the chat, um, I previously did not have any marketing experience. Um, I leveraged um, my previous role, which was in uh, pricing in the consumer world, pricing capabilities. And so with that role, we worked with a bunch of cross-functional partners. Mm -hmm. And I previously had experience um, working on the trade desk, trading different uh, mortgage bonds with uh, um, different banks. So and leverage that experience to um, come to the partnerships world focusing on marketing. Um, and so with that, um, they had a role that was uh, net new um, with different aspects uh, that had marketing, reporting, um, operations. And so from that, uh, the previous experiences, I had the opportunity to, to join this team and um, I was lucky enough to uh, get this role. Awesome, awesome, thank you. We have about a minute and a half before we're going to go to the breakout session, so we probably have time for, for one more question. And to our candidates, I, I love the, the interaction in the chat. Keep it up. I see you're interacting with the, uh, the, the American Express uh, executives, and they're giving you a lot of feedback there, so keep those questions coming. Uh, I see someone asked, are there leadership positions available? And uh, Mr. Rich Porter answered directly and said, yes, we have plenty leadership roles available. So this is your opportunity, candidates, to really shine. Uh, we, 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 you know, we, we're putting this together as a platform for you to show who you are. So if you haven't, drop your LinkedIn uh, profile in the chat. Uh, represent your school. Let us know what school you're you're uh, you're attending or already a graduate of, and let's let's keep the party going. Um, Christina, are you with us? Christina Zhao. Well, I'm muted. I'm here. I'm double. I was double muted. Sorry. Okay. Yep. Nope. I can hear you. Great. I think we're gonna we're gonna send this last question over to you since um you haven't been with the organization that long and you kind of came on during a tough time, which is COVID. Um, how do you how do you how do you stop or prevent getting lost in the in the the big brand known as Amex? I mean, uh, it was mentioned that you have 27 million customers uh, in your credit card services uh, division. I mean. How do you not get lost in the, in the number? Yeah, for sure. Um, so a couple of things that make uh, my role, especially as an associate product manager, and my role within Digital Labs very unique and very special is that Digital Labs is actually about a 200 person organization. And we focus on a lot of digital product development. And um, I think it was told to me really early on that Labs is like family. And I was like, I don't really know what that means. This is just like work. This is like my day job, my nine to five. But it's really, really shown true that, you know, Digital Labs has become my family. I hang out with people outside of work. Um, I like have a lot of people's phone numbers. I go to ask them for help. You know, I needed to apply for an apartment. Didn't know what, how to do that. Um, didn't know where my tax documents were. Had to figure out how to do that, where like the HR portal was. Um, so, you know, I think, once again, touching back on that culture aspect, um, while Amex is such a big brand and such a large corporation, you really find that group of people that you know you work with on a day-to-day -day basis. They are really there to support you and everyone is really looking for your success. Um, even this week when Claire reached out to like our team to set up this event, I hadn't worked with Claire previously and she's been more than supportive and more helpful and like more ways than I can ask for. Um, and so it just really showcases that it's not necessarily just your business unit that has this culture. It's, you know, Amex culture overall is just really there to support you, you know, whether that's you're an early person in your career 
whether you've been at Amex for 20 plus years, you know, they want to see you grow and they want to see you succeed. Well, thank you so much for that response. That was perfect and uh, definitely helps us to know uh, that, that the Amex culture is more of a family and that, that someone's there to always help you uh, onto the next level. So thank you so much. And, and you're right. We can't say enough great things about Claire. She's our resident expert college swimmer, uh, big time college swimmer. I mean, everyone knows about Claire's uh, successes. So we won't, we won't, Making go down me flash. That. <laughs> we won't, we won't go down that, that path, but yes, uh, I, I share the sentiments about Claire O'Brien. So thank you. All right. So it is now time for us to go to the breakout. Um, there are three rooms, uh, marketing, digital products, and strategy and analytics. Go ahead and go on to the rooms and I will meet you back here um, at the end about 725 with next steps. Hey Larry, let me let me interject yeah. something before because I gotta turn on the um, the breakout rooms. Okay. So um, quickly let me see here. Uh, so so like Larry said we have three breakout rooms marketing, digital product and strategy and analytics. When you get inside the breakout rooms, you can turn your audio and video on so that you can start to ask questions using um, the audio and video. If you don't have uh, the audio and video set up or you know, you're know in a place where you can use your audio, for example, you can use the chat. So um, you can ask questions in the chat. And to the MX folks that will be in the different rooms, please keep an eye on the chat and uh, you know, see if you can answer questions from the chat as well as from the candidates as they're coming in. Now, there's another thing I, I wanna make sure to share to try to have some organization around the breakout rooms. And that is um, in Zoom, there's something called reactions. And if you go uh, and you look at the menu options within Zoom and you see the, the option for reactions, one of the reactions is raise hand. So as you can see, I just clicked on raise hand. You see a little icon that shows up on my screen for raising a hand. Um, I would encourage you all to use the raise hand feature when you're inside of the breakout rooms so that the uh, panelists and the folks from the MX team can see that you have a question and call on you to ask that question. So please use the raise hand feature in reactions when you jump into the breakout rooms. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go ahead and start the breakout room so that you guys can jump into them. So opening up all the rooms. So you can actually jump between rooms. So if you're interested in marketing and strategy and analytics, you can start out in marketing, for example, ask some questions there, and then move over to the strategy and analytics uh, breakout room if that interests you, or the digital product uh, breakout room. So um, also to our MX team, feel free to go ahead and jump into the appropriate breakout rooms. And then uh, to our candidates, you can also go ahead and place yourself in the appropriate breakout room where you have questions. So what I'm gonna do also, is I'm gonna allow you guys to unmute yourselves. So allow participants to unmute themselves. All right, so you guys can actually come off with mute when you get into the breakout rooms, when, you, when you're ready to ask your questions. And then if you have any, if you're not sure, um, you can't get into a room for some reason, like if you're dialed in um, or you're not able to you know, leverage Zoom to jump into a room, I'll stay here in the main lobby and help folks get assigned to appropriate breakout rooms. All right, take advantage of this opportunity to network, to ask questions, to engage, because these conversations could lead to interviews down the road. So please take advantage. Thanks. Just having a little trouble uh, jumping into the marketing room. Um, so, okay, who, uh, what was your name? Ms. Sila. Sila, and you wanna go into marketing? Yeah. Okay. Okay, there you go. Hey, um, it's Christina. I'm having some issue on muting when I get to the breakout room. Um, I'm not sure how to fix this. Okay, I, yeah, think I also need to get into a breakout room also. Okay, so I just changed the setting where it says mute the participants upon entry. So if you try it again, hopefully it won't mute you. Cool. Hi. Hi, I'm trying to get into the breakout room for marketing. 
What was your name? Me too. My name is Paris Smith. Okay, Paris, let me let me get you to the marketing room. All right. Anybody else having any issues getting into such Yeah, Yasin Thomas. Uh, which room? Uh, marketing also. Got it. Okay. Yeah, this is uh, Tavon Callaway. I'm having trouble getting into the marketing room as well. I'm having trouble getting into the analytics. Thank you very much. No problem. Got gotcha. you. Well, I'm looking in the chat and people that are asking to go to different rooms, I'm just assigning it to them as well. Thank you. Help. Yeah. Hey, Reg, do you want to jump into that digital that digital product room, digital product room? Yeah, Reg, can you jump into the digital product room, make sure the MX folks are able to unmute? Sorry, I'm having trouble getting into the analytics room. I'm sorry, what was that? I'm having trouble getting into the analytics room. Can you analytics? please? Yeah. All right, one second. Hi, Willie. It just, it just kicked me out of the um, marketing room. Can you add me back in there, please? No problem. Just save on Callaway. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Yep. Kevin Brown to marketing. Got him already, looks like. Yeah, I did it. I did it. Okay, thanks. Good job, LJ. Thanks, sir. Yes, great job. Thanks, Tamika. Let me, let me remove my hand being raised. Lower hand. There we go. I'm gonna check out one of the breakout rooms. Okay. I'm gonna stop recording for a minute. In terms of the event, I was able to I was able to participate. I uh, jumped around in some of the rooms as well. There was some a lot of, of incredible questions and engagement, the chat engagement as well. Um, so I really appreciate uh, the partnership and you, the work you guys have done in setting this up. Uh, from a potential candidate perspective. Um, I would leave you with uh, Amex is an incredible place to work. You heard me speak about it early on in terms of my um, intro. Um, I love working at American Express. Um, it's it's an incredible place to be. And you know, I saw some questions in the in the chat as well as when I was able to bounce around the rooms around. Well, I'm not sure if my background's a perfect fit for this, or, or I do X, and, and you're not recruiting for that. We're recruiting for a lot of jobs, right? Obviously, you have to narrow it down to some extent to have events like this. But we're a huge organization. Um, with multiple opportunities. So don't, don't hesitate to fill out the information that Larry mentioned to submit resumes. Uh, we'll be able to work those around in the organization if it's not a fit for the specific jobs that we talked about today or that are posted and we'll get those to the right people as well. Um, and feel free to connect with us as well. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out. LinkedIn request folks. I saw a bunch of LinkedIn requests and, and pages pop up as well, but uh, it was an awesome event. I'm super excited that I was able to get back in time for it. I would have been really disappointed if I didn't get to join, um, but I'm really glad I did get to join because it really exceeded my expectations. And hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. Got a feel for not only the jobs, but more importantly, the people um, and the culture uh, of American Express. Um, you know, you always hear these statements that people don't leave jobs uh, or leave organizations because of money and things like that. They leave because of leaders and, and the people where they work with and the cultures in which they're working. Um, so hopefully you got a sense more about the people and the culture of the organization and American Express, um, because the jobs to me, they'll, you know, there'll be similar jobs in other organizations, right? You see a specific analyst job in marketing or an analytics job. Um, th those to some extent will look the same and feel the same in, in any job description you read in any organization, 
in any company. But hopefully you got to get, get a sense tonight of just the people and the culture um, for the company. And I hope you enjoyed it because I, I, I did. Thank you, Anthony. It looks like from the feedback we're seeing coming in the chat that everyone had a great time and they're thankful for the opportunity. And thank you, sir, for spending time with us tonight. All right. So we're going to wrap this thing up and we're going to close out. Everyone, make sure you're watching for your email. Also, make sure around November 29th, when uh, Amex is starting to start their recruiting process and starting the first round of interviews, check your spam box. Make sure you don't have an email sitting somewhere where someone's trying to reach out to you. Let's let's make sure we didn't make the best of this opportunity. Thank you so much. Will, unless you have anything else to uh, to add, sir, we're going to close out. I'd like to, I'd like to, to get the, everyone's smiling face. So if you turned off your video, turn it back on for me real fast. <laughs> let's, uh, let's get a group shot real fast. Everybody say cheese. Let me see here. Jeez. Let, me, let me get those smiling faces. I appreciate it. Oh, we got a lot of people in here, man. But I appreciate you guys. So this is really, this is just, this is really awesome. I appreciate you all jumping on. Like I always say, we can't do these events without you guys showing up and participating and taking advantage of the opportunities. So thanks again to the Amex team. Thanks, uh, LJ, for being our moderator and to both the Amex and HBCU team uh, that helped put this event together. Thank you. And to our candidates, Definitely take advantage of this opportunity. As you guys can see, this is a great company. Um, so check your email for the links that you'll need to follow in order to be considered for an interview. We'll, we will be sending those out shortly. So thanks, everybody. Thanks again, LJ. And one last time, say cheese. Cheese. All right. Thanks, everybody. All right. Good night. And you have 5,200.